I'm Kasha from Trace and Mill, and I'm here with Ed Wilson, the scripting guy. He's going to tell us a little bit about uh, all of the available PowerShell resources that Microsoft TechNet has to offer. Ed, um, can you tell us a little bit about the scripting center? Okay, sure. Well, the Microsoft Script Center uh, is kind of like the best place uh, on the entire internet. Uh, to find information about VBScript, uh, but also PowerShell. And really, you don't want to go around looking for information about VBScript. I mean, VBScript was really cool like 10 years ago. Yeah, and so, um, like, we haven't even added anything to VBScript since, like, when does XP? I mean, and that was about 10 years ago, believe it or not. So, like, time flies when you're old and your hair's falling out. So. Uh, anyway, so the TechNet Script Center uh, came about actually in August of 2004, uh, and there were these original scripting guys, and they all did VBScript. Uh, and uh, Dean Saltis, uh, Greg Stem, uh, Peter Castani, and Bob Wells, those were the original four uh, scripting guys. And then uh, June came in a little bit later, uh, I think, and they basically had gotten together to write a book that was like the Windows. 2000 scripting guide and that was like his big book it was really really cool and it was really exciting but we're not going to talk about VB script today because we're going to talk about PowerShell because PowerShell. PowerShell is cool yeah. and um, so at the script center uh, if you come to the um, to the main page of the script center it's here script center see there's Dr. Scripto for the 2011 scripting games yeah that's me yeah fat ball headed guy yeah got a little, little beard you know so um, but anyway so this is the script center. Now the cool thing about this is on this main page here, you know, we always have like a little feed about the blog, and then we've got some other stuff there about re re resources. Uh, so let's take a look at the blog first. So if I go to the Hey Scripting Guy blog, which I can click there, then uh, it comes over, and this is the blog. Now, dude, it's a blog. But one of the things that's interesting though is it's really not a blog. Uh, more than that, yeah. It's a lot more than a blog. I mean, a normal blog is like, hey, you know, I got a new cat, the cat ate the dog, you know, and now we don't have a dog anymore. Yeah, or something like that. Words to that effect. And that's about it. Uh, each of these, I actually call these blog articles, which is something I made up. Uh, because these are 1,500 to 2,000 words. These are like six to eight pages in a Word document. And uh, so this is like a magazine article. And we do this seven days a week. It's the only Microsoft blog that publishes seven days a week. As a matter of fact, it's one of the few blogs anywhere that publishes seven days a week. 365 days a year. Okay? So this is really cool. So there's a lot of a lot of stuff here. You can also see we get a lot of comments, you know, for people commenting about the different articles and stuff. Now one of the things that I do uh, is um, one of the reasons that I went to seven days a week is so that I could invite guests, okay? Because I like to write. I like to write articles about PowerShell. And so Sean Kearney. Sean Kearney is a Microsoft MVP uh, from uh, Ontario, uh, Canada. And uh, he does a lot of really, really cool stuff. He's um, one of the co-founders of the Dr. Scripto um, you know, fan, pa uh, fan site. You know, so Dr. Scripto has a fan club. This is Dr. Scripto. See, his, uh, he had an accident, you know. He's like saying, hey, can somebody give me a hand? <laughs> anyway, poor Dr. Scripto. Um, but yeah, so Dr. Scripto has his own fan club. Uh, it's like drscripto.tv, by the way. And they got movies and TV shows, The Adventures of Dr. Scripto, pretty cool. So this is Sean. So Sean writes this blog article for me. And uh, he's talking about using PowerShell but interacting with legacy stuff. So a lot of people do have this old VB script code and they need to be able to work with it. And, uh, or they've got these command line executables and um, they'd like to move away from batch files, but they're not ready to like dive completely into PowerShell. So uh, I was talking to Sean at the PowerShell deep dive in Las Vegas and uh, we kind of came up with this idea about doing a series of articles related to working with legacy stuff. So that's what this is. So that's actually pretty cool. So this is the blog. And then there's a new community aspect? There is. There's a brand new community uh, community site. So I'm just going to go back to the home page because the easiest way. 
and go to the community tab. And uh, so one of the things uh, that would, I learned from the 2011 scripting games is that um, a lot of people would like to be involved you know, uh, with other people that are learning PowerShell. Yeah. And a great way to do that is through a users group. So one of the things that I'm wanting to do this year is to try to help people uh, start PowerShell users groups. So I've talked to people that are running successful users groups in like New York and Atlanta um, and Wisconsin and places like that. And uh, they're writing some guest blog articles about how do I start a PowerShell users group. And that's going to be coming up soon. Well, in the meantime, uh, for uh, TechEd, we got a community tab. So you come over here. There's like some fat guy there, so just ignore him. Uh, and then here is uh, the United States. Now, this is only for the United States. So like the users groups that are in Canada and some of the other places, you know, they're not added in yet. Uh, but so, for instance, we're here in Atlanta at TechEd. And so I can click on this, and there is, as a matter of fact, a PowerShell users group in Atlanta. And it's called the South Florida user group. No, it's called the Atlanta PowerShell Users Group. Just seeing if you guys are listening. Okay, so now the cool thing about this is there is a community site. And uh, it's, uh, if I come over here, whoops, disappeared, come back right over here. So it tells me that it's powershellgroup.org. So you can go there, but this is kind of a nice way to, uh, to find the information. And so if I click this, it actually takes you to the PowerShell Community Org page. And uh, on this page, it tells you about their meetings that are coming up, uh, stuff that's going on, uh, way to communicate yeah. with the group, and all of that. Um, eventually, I would like to get it um, on my, uh, my page where I could like pull in information about the different meetings and stuff like that, but we don't have that, that there yet. But I have this vision, yeah, but it's still new and growing. I have this vision, though, that one day in the not too distant future, any day of the month, any day of the year, you'll be able to find a live meeting from a PowerShell users group somewhere in the world. Cool. <laughs> and that would be very cool. Um, I have a couple more questions. Sure. Um, so, uh, why do you think it's important for IT pros to learn PowerShell today? Well, um, why is it important for IT pros to learn PowerShell today? Well, because it's being built into all of the products. Uh, so, for instance, my, uh, Exchange. So, if you do, you know, Microsoft Exchange Server, you know, beginning with 2007, you know, 2010, you know, you need to know PowerShell uh, because that's how you use that to manage it. Uh, and Windows 2008 Server, R2, you know, we've got the Active Directory commandlets. Uh, we've got bits commandlets. You know, we've got all kinds of other commandlets and stuff that are there, you know, for managing you know, that product. Uh, SQL has a SQL uh, PowerShell provider. It's got SQL commandlets. SharePoint has like 500 and some commandlets for it. You know, and that's just on the server side. They didn't even do uh, client side yet. Uh, Link uh, is coming out with all of these commandlets. You know, and that's this year. We haven't even gotten into what's in the works, you know, that are coming up. So PowerShell is there. It's extremely powerful. Right. Um, and uh, it will make your life easier. Now the neat thing about this is that um, when I first got my MCSE back on NT351, uh, my messaging uh, was a uh, uh, elective was PC mail. Okay? So you create a user, you mail enable the user, they send email, right? Okay? Then comes Exchange 4.0. So I get my MCSE on 4.0. Now, I had to learn some exchange stuff, but it's still email. Yeah. Created a user, they send email. But the big thing is the interface completely changed. You know, I know I need to create a user, but where do I go to create the user? How do I mail enable this user? How do I give them a mailbox? How do I sign them permissions? How do I do all the stuff I could do in PC mail? It's all changed. And then in 5.0, we move stuff around. 5.5, five, we move it around again. 2,000, it gets moved around again. You know, I, have, I know the, exactly the same concepts that I've known for 20 years, but every two or three years, I'm learning a new interface. In PowerShell, that's not the case. You know, if I want to find out something about a user's mailbox, then I can use git command you know, and type 
dash noun, star, mailbox. That's going to give me something about a mailbox. Guaranteed. And it might give me a whole bunch or it might give me a little bit. But then I find that commandlet, I send it to get help, and now I know how to find out stuff about mailboxes. You know, and that's what's really cool because it is consistent. And it makes the job of the administrator that much easier. Much easier. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, but uh, a lot of people are intimidated by PowerShell. They're, you know, have a hard time learning it, starting with it. What would you recommend as your, you know, resource for somebody new to PowerShell? Okay. Where should they start? Start with the scripting wise. Excellent. Okay, let's come over here. So um, we're going to go to the home page, scripting wise. Now, the scripting wife is actually a real person. She's wandered off, uh, but she's actually here at Tech yet. Um, and uh, she's a real live, honest to goodness person. Now, uh, somebody, some people thought she was fictitious, by the way. Um, but we'll come down here. Now, this is a blog, so you go to the oldest articles first. Now, what happened was I was uh, designing the 2010 scripting games. So I was creating all the events and stuff, having meetings with, uh, with different sponsors, you know, like Quest and people like that, um, you know, talking to, um, you know, to different people. And um, Teresa, who is the scripting wife, she got real excited about it. She said, you know, I think that I would like to learn PowerShell for the scripting games. Now, the big change that I made last year was I changed the beginner event to be real beginners. In the past, they weren't. Okay. So they, I, I wanted people to learn PowerShell, and I thought the scripting games is a great chance to learn PowerShell. So uh, somebody that's just a brand new beginner. So that's what I had been talking about. And that's when Teresa said, I think I can learn PowerShell. So this is in the kitchen. Now we have a computer in the kitchen. So I jump over to the computer. I go to Facebook. I go to the scripting guys page, and I say, this just in, scripting wife, to compete in the scripting games. And she wasn't even a real scripting wife at that point in time. And then she looks at me and she said, I wish you hadn't done that. <laughs> and I said, why? And she said, well, what if I change my mind? And I said, that's why I did it. <laughs> so then we come over here. And this post like a, uh, appeared just like this a little bit ago, you know, um, well, shortly after the, uh, the posting on Facebook. And um, so... The whole point of it is you know, the scripting wife is going to compete in the scripting games. Now, she was an accountant, which means she's computer literate, but not a geek. Okay? So she knows how to use a mouse. She knows how to use a keyboard. Knows I have her create my Excel spreadsheets. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so she's a lot better with that kind of stuff than I am. She reads directions. Was Dude, I'm a guy, you know, I don't read directions, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, she's already way ahead, <laughs> yeah, in many, in many things. So, what she did is I document her scenario about learning PowerShell. So, then the next article, and uh, unfortunately, we have to kind of go backwards because it is a blog. So, she gets started with Windows PowerShell. Well, now, the first thing that she needs to do is install it because this was last year and she was still running Windows XP. She hadn't, um, hadn't gotten upgraded yet. So she's over here. So she does Windows updates, blah, blah, blah. She does the, uh, does the installs. And then all of a sudden, dude, she gets an error. Okay? So, like, I just have her do this stuff, you know, and she goes through and she gets errors. And so then we have to kind of walk through this. Well, then she comes over here and she does all of this, blah, blah, blah. Uh, she finally gets it. Now, the other thing is, unfortunately, trying to find PowerShell, <sighs> that's a problem. In our infinite wisdom, we didn't call PowerShell 2 PowerShell 2. We called it like something about a goofy management pack thing or other. You know? And so you type in the, uh, the search, you know, and all the search engines bring you back to like the CTP3 of PowerShell. Uh, because that was about the last time it was really called PowerShell or something, at least in the search engines. So luckily, you know, she couldn't find it, but I put a link to it on the Script Center downloads page so she could find it. But, I mean, seriously, that has been a question I've been asked over and over and over again. Um, so she gets it installed finally, uh, gets it set up. Well, then she can't find it because, to me, if I was going to be, if I was the, the architect, of Windows, then this desktop with the clouds and junk, that'd be history. 
that would be a PowerShell shell. As a matter of fact, I wish that I could get rid of Explorer EXE and replace it with PowerShell EXE. Yeah, in the old days, I could have done that. I'm not sure that I can do that anymore. You know, but um, anyway, so you install it, you can't find it. So now you have to go over here to Programs, Accessories, and then on down to PowerShell before you ever get to it. Okay, so all of this stuff is like things that normal people, you know, they 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 have problems with. Yeah, you know, and for me, you know, I'm I'm a geek, you know, so uh, I don't think that any of these things would be problems. Uh, but you know, that's what's really cool about her. And so when I explain stuff to her, a lot of times she comes back. And she says, "Can you put that in English? I don't speak geek." Yeah, and uh, so the articles are really funny. You know, they're well written. Uh, and it's, she's a real person trying to learn PowerShell. And I think that a lot of people have found you know, that by, by reading through these, you know, that it takes some of the scariness out of it. Yeah, because they might find themselves in similar situations. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, something, something else that you might be interested in. I know the 2010 uh, uh, scripting games are over. Yes. The 2011 scripting games are over. Uh, the 2012 ones aren't over yet. Uh, they're, they're actually going to be probably in April uh, of 2012. Okay. Um, I think I sent a tweet out about the dates. You want to get started, you know. You want to get started, right um, and the best place to do that is to come over here to the uh, scripting games all in one page. So I've got a link there for the scripting games, and this is the all the links in one page, and uh, so you can come over here, and even though the games are over, what I recommend is that you work through this stuff. So what you want to do is like click on beginner event one and read the event and um, come on and uh, oh so this, this goes up over here so this like uh, is the event itself and then this is her, uh, the scripting wife's comments on the event and then this is the expert solution so do the event first if you get stuck then read what the scripting wife had to say about it now she's not going to give you the answer but she will tell you her approach to the event or some things that she looked at, some places that she went to to try to find information, okay. stuff that she thought was difficult, um, and stuff like that. And then this is the expert solution. Now the other thing you can do is you could also even go back to um, uh, to the uh, script, uh, POSH code, and um, I'm not sure this link's going to exactly work, um, but we'll click on it and see what happens. Because that was to contribute the articles. Um, yeah, that just wants me to sign in. That's what me to sign in. I need to put another link up here uh, to the uh, articles themselves, uh, to the submissions. Yeah. Um, you know what? I can add that link sure. to the blog. Sure. Uh, but um, yeah. but yeah, we could uh, put a link to there um, to to go to Posh Code. And then what you want to do is then go to look at like event one, you know, the submissions. And so okay. the, all these scripts have been graded by judges. Um, and there was like several thousand scripts submitted for the scripting games. And so look at the five star scripts. And okay. I'd say, oh no. And then look, read some of the comments that are associated with it. And then maybe look at a one star script <laughs> and, and see if there's comments on those. Yeah, and so that'll give you like some good and bad examples for this. So what you've got then, you've got the event, you write your script, yeah, or you try to write the script. Uh, read the scripting wife, see what she's got to say about it. Look at an expert commentary, and then go on over to the posh code side, yeah, and look at the actual scripts that were submitted. Yeah. So like for beginner event one, there was almost 200 scripts submitted. Yeah, so that's 200 additional examples you yeah. can look at. And by the end of that, dude, you'll know that event pretty darn well. And you can do that for all 10 beginner events, and then you can turn around and do it again for all 10 advanced mm -hmm. events. Now, the other thing that I did, and uh, this was actually, I spent quite a bit of time working on this, and uh, that's the, uh, the study guide for the 2011 scripting games. And so, what I did is, uh, the 2011 scripting games, I basically identified nine essential domains you know, that are key to any network administrator's job. Uh, for instance, like working with processes, services, working with files, working with folders, um, 
handling output, monkeying around with XML, uh, perhaps using the internet, regular expressions, local accounts and groups. And so um, on each of these, I talk about this and I have links uh, to articles um, you know, that, uh, that I've got, had on this. You know, so this takes okay, you to so a bunch of stuff on regular expressions. Yeah, so you, you may want to actually start with the learning guide before you actually start in on working through the games themselves. Well, thank you so much. It's great sure. meeting you. Great, absolutely. Thank you for your time.